how are you doing today? This is Terry with your March 25th full moon Libra lunar eclipse coming in hot at midnight, the witching hour. <laughs> this full moon, we have such a powerful penumbral lunar eclipse on March 25th at midnight at five degrees and seven minutes of a Libra in that direct opposition to the sun in Aries at five degrees and seven minutes. And this is going to be affecting all of us wherever you have personal planets in your chart between zero to 10 degrees of all the cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn, you will be feeling this the most. But we all have Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn somewhere in our chart. So wherever that shows up in your chart, that area is going to be influenced by this eclipse. So look up your chart if you have it and see where's your cardinal signs. And if you know what personal planets show up for you, maybe you know that you are a Libra or you are an Aries especially, or maybe you have Aries or Libra North Node, you will be feeling it the most. But if you drop it in the comments where your Aries and Libra or any of your cardinal signs, Cancer and Capricorn too, I will give you a free mini eclipse reading in the comments and um, and you will be in it to win it for a free astrology chart reading. I do these drawings for every full moon and today's Libra full moon. The winner is Soha Gandor and she had beautiful information about her Aries Libra eclipse and I know she's going to be feeling it. And I'm excited to do her reading. She left lots of comments down below. I think she had more chances to win than most because I give you a chance to win for every each and every little comment and engagement. It just helps my channel to grow and be seen and to reach people. So leave your comment down below and you will be in it to win it for our next full moon. And I'm also having an eclipse astrology sale right now. For just $88, you can get your astrology chart read for all four eclipses. We're going to have four eclipses this year in Libra and Aries and Pisces. And I haven't really looked at the fall eclipses yet. I'm just so hyper focused on these eclipses. But for $88, you get all four eclipses. I will tell you how it will affect you personally. I'll even throw in coping mechanisms <laughs> because we could all use some coping mechanisms this eclipse portal season. And I will put a link to that sale down in the description. And uh, today I am calling in the goddess Quan Yen. If you know Quan Yen, she is an Eastern goddess of compassion. She is the divine mother and she just feels like she owns that Libra energy. She's really the mother that will take care of you in this. If, if God was a woman, it would be Quan Yen. And this is a time when we need this goddess of compassion. I know so many of you are going through some really hard times just as we are entering this eclipse portal and the, we're just getting on the roller coaster. The roller coaster hasn't even started yet. And people are having a lot of relationship issues, friendship issues, mother issues. It's all coming up for people right now. And I've been reading some of these eclipse charts from the sale that I started. I'm already getting into these readings right now and I'm seeing lots of conflict, lots of relationships ending or people are going through therapy. It's just a really intense time for relationships right now. And so this is a time to call in that compassion for everyone in your life. 
even if it's somebody that you're, you know, in a conflict with, that's when you need to call in compassion even more. And I think of Libra as this divine Kuan Yin mother energy. And if you are a mother, once you become a mother, it's almost like you look at everybody a little bit differently because you just have more compassion. It's like everybody is somebody's child, even if they're behaving badly, even if they're cutting you off in traffic, even if the person's a total jerk, there's some part of you that thinks, God, well, that's somebody's kid, right? And you start to look at people differently and even our enemies can become teachers under this eclipse portal. I promise you, if you really take a meta moment, I like to say when I'm in conflict with people, you know, just taking that moment to just take a deep breath and center yourself and really try to figure out what is going on in this situation instead of just reacting instantly and... <laughs> You'll find if you take that meta moment and you try to look at that person with some level of compassion, even as you're upset with them, you can see the mirror in the other person, the teaching that they're trying to give you. Everybody is a teacher in our life. And even when you're frustrated with them, there's something there for your soul or you wouldn't be in conflict with them. It's all part of your soul's divine lessons and growth and why you're here. And I have such a Mr. Rogers vibe with this Libra eclipse portal. I tell you, Lib uh, Mr. Rogers, I bet he was a Libra. He has that kind of Libra caregiving energy. He was always teaching kids how to be on their best behavior and have compassion. And Mr. Rogers says, look for the helpers. So even if you find yourself in chaotic times during this eclipse portal where anything could happen, I don't know what's going to happen, but look for the helpers. There's always helpers in every situation you find yourself in. And if things are going wrong in our world as they may during this whole year-long eclipse portal, the helpers will be there and they'll probably be Libras. <laughs> I think all the helpers are Libras. And I'm gonna cover some major transits that are gonna be affecting us during this Libra lunar eclipse. And they really started, so much of this eclipse portal energy started on that Pisces new moon, that Shiva moon. I was talking a lot about the energy of these times in my last report. So if you haven't checked out that Pisces new moon, there's still time to go check it out because it's really going to, this influence that we're already soaking in is going to be affecting us for the next six months. It's not like it just happens on one day and we're, it's over. And so you might want to go back and have a look, see if you haven't watched the Pisces new moon. I'll put the link down in the description because this eclipse portal will also go way past this lunar eclipse too, because next up we have that total solar eclipse in Aries on April 8th. Mark your calendars. April 8th, total solar eclipse. This is a big one. This is one of the biggest eclipses we have in our lifetime. And I'm going to put the solar eclipse map over here for the path of totality. So you can see if you live in an area where you might be able to see it. I was fortunate enough to live right at the epicenter of the Aquarius total solar eclipse that happened in 2017, which was just wild because I literally moved to Central Oregon where that eclipse was centered as part of my Aquarius North Node, I didn't know it at the time. I just naturally did this. And then later I was like, oh my gosh, that I'm an Aquarius North Node. I moved to an Aquarius city where the Aquarius eclipse was epicentered. <laughs> all, it all just came together in synchronicity. And this is the kind of thing that can happen in this eclipse portal. You find yourself just making a big change it seems out of nowhere, but it's all astrologically planned. If you look at your chart, I looked at my chart later, I learned much more about the North Node and realized how much my North Node had aligned with that particular eclipse that was calling me home. It was wild. And 
you may want to watch this total solar eclipse if you are in that path of totality or maybe even want to take a trip to go see it because when you see that diamond when the total solar eclipse comes there's just this diamond of light it is so spectacular and it got really dark in the middle of the day and even the birds and the animals were kind of freaking out it was just this wild yet sort of ominous energy that we had when I experienced that total solar eclipse. Let me know if you've experienced a total eclipse in the comments and what you thought, because it is a really spectacular event that is worth checking out. Even though so many cultures have so many superstitions about watching the eclipses. And what do you think of that? Is it bad luck? I am really superstitious and I won't do things if I think it's bad luck, but I'm also this astronomer geek at heart and I love to look at eclipses. So uh, it's just a tough one for me because it goes against my fear of superstitions, but I want to look at the, I kind of want to go just hop a plane and go into the path of totality to see this April 8th Aries total solar eclipse will be worth viewing. And before we get into the lunar eclipse, I just want to mention that the sun will conjunct Neptune uh, in Pisces on March 17th, also known as St. Patrick's Day here in the U.S. And this will be a Neptune Kazemi in Pisces. This is a dreamer's conjunction. This is a good time to take some more kava kava tea, to have profound dreams. Your intuition will be heightened on this March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. And this is a really creative energy for just channeling that divine feminine energy into writing and maybe painting, playing some music, any kind of artistic talents that you have. Maybe it's just cleaning up your house and then decorating or rearranging the furniture. This is a beautifying energy when Neptune and Pisces conjuncts the sun. So this would be a good time also for just embracing some forest bathing and nature therapy, get out near water if you can. Pisces is that water sign and Neptune is the ocean. This would be a wonderful day to sneak off to the beach. If you live near the ocean, go to the ocean and go look for seashells and but any waters, rivers, lakes, streams, it would be so beneficial just to be around the sound of water. The sound of water is so healing and actually we did a sound healing with water i'll drop it down in the comments if you just want to be at home i kind of i feel very introverted around this sun neptune conjunction like i just want to stay home i think it could be kind of a crazy energy too because not everybody does well with neptune it's a very esoteric energy that some people get a little crazy it can also indicate insanity <laughs> so i don't know if i want to be out in the world i might just want to hunker down and listen to some sound healing with water instead but i would be really cautious about consuming those green beers on this saint patrick's day because neptune in pisces rules over just getting belligerently drunk overdose confusion and illusion neptune and pisces is that alice in wonderland aspect i've talked about before and when you get that neptune and pisces combust the sun it can be overwhelming confusion delusion and maybe not the best day to sign contracts either and we may see some even drinking and driving accidents this day i'm really afraid of resulting from intoxication so just be careful out there in the world on saint patrick's day there can be also this sense of having your energetic boundaries crossed by others or feeling energetically drained by the needs of other people on this day I don't always love the words energy vampire, but this really is a day with Neptune conjunct the sun when we might see people just being very energy vampire, just wanting to suck the life out of you. So I'm just making this an unplugged, introverted, go within, not talk to anybody kind of transit to 
this could be a good time to, to just meditate and pray for peace and get really spiritual, mystical, magical, you know, light your candle, maybe burn some Palo Santo and see if you can connect in with the divine spirit or ancestors or just getting those divine messages by taking some time out just to be by yourself on Neptune in Pisces, conjunct sun. That's what I'll be doing. Get mystical, magical, whatever that looks like for you. And we also have Venus entering Pisces where Venus is exalted. And this is beautiful. Venus loves to be in Pisces and there's love is in the air and love becomes empowered when Venus enters Pisces. So we need this on our planet right now just to have more of a higher vibrational love vibe just emanating and love is gaining momentum over hate this season finally. We will see some beautiful love stories come out of this Venus in Pisces time that is only from March 11th through April 5th. So you'll really want to get into your heart center, maybe do some heart math, opening your heart chakra, anything you can do to just love yourself, giving yourself love and self-care and connecting in with those higher vibrational love vibes. This Venus in Pisces will give a special trine to the Cancers and Scorpios. I'm a Scorpio, I'm like, oh yeah, I can feel it. I can feel Venus in Pisces trining my sign. Right now as I read this, it is, uh, today is March 11th, so it's just happening now. And I have my little Venus fork here. <laughs> This is an acutonics fork in the tune of Venus, and I don't know if you can hear it, but this is the sound of Venus. And so on these days, I love to just, ah, just play Venus into my heart chakra. <laughs> and we will all be reaping the rewards of Venus being in Pisces. No matter what sign you are, you have Pisces somewhere in your chart. And if you know where Pisces is in your chart, drop it in the comments. I'll give you a little mini, mini reading of what I think that means for that house. Or if you have planets, maybe your sun in Pisces. You, sun in Pisces is really going to be feeling the love vibes strong. And if you're in a relationship, this is a wonderful time for deeper spiritual connections. And possibly even for more commitment. And this would be an ideal time for a wedding if you're planning one, just not on March 21st, because I'm going to talk about how Venus will be conjunct Saturn on March 21st. So I'll get to that in a minute. But this is a time to just really love yourself deeply. When you love yourself deeply, you will manifest love in your life. So if you're single, your first homework assignment is to really love yourself. And then you really will manifest all that you desire by loving yourself, especially um, if what you desire is love, then you really should manifest love by loving yourself. But you can also tap into doing what you love and the money will follow because Venus also rules over money. Venus rules over love and money. She gets the two best things. <laughs> That's what everyone wants. When I do astrology chart readings, people are either, I want love or I want money. And if we have both love and money, it seems like people are pretty happy when you have both of those things aligned and coming in strong. <laughs> And if you're single, this is a wonderful time to meet somebody and you could meet your true love. This is a fairy tales do come true kind of transit. So get out there and get flirty and beautify yourself and be seen under this. You only have till April 5th to meet the love of your life. So get going. <laughs> And then, like I said, March 21st is the only time when Venus is in Pisces. It's a little tricky because we have 
Venus, Saturn conjunction on March 21st. And Saturn is kind of a buzzkill to Venus, the divine lover. And we may have some harsh realities about our relationship coming to the surface when Saturn and Venus get together on March 21st. Maybe you thought somebody was going to leave their wife for you and that is just not going to happen. He's never going to do it. It's that kind of bubble bursting energy that happens when Venus and Saturn conjunct. It's the realism that is saying your dream of love after ever after may not come true this time. You're not going to get your heart's desire this time. And your relationship may be unstable under this Venus-Saturn conjunction that happens on March 21st, but we will be under the energy of this conjunction for quite a while. And this tricky aspect will go right into that Libra lunar eclipse, affecting us with discouragement for weeks. It can bring disappointment, depression, and all of those dreaded D words. <laughs> so just take it easy. Be really good to yourself if you're going through some disappointment and discouragement under this Venus Saturn and know that this too shall pass. It will get better. And Venus rules money as much as love, as I said. So it, will, it could be even a financial setback that is happening that comes unexpectedly when Venus and Saturn conjunct. And Venus will eventually move into a conjunction with Uranus in Taurus, bringing even more unexpected love events later this spring, where she's also, Venus is right at home in Taurus. So Venus is gonna be in a good place when Venus moves into Taurus. But when she conjuncts Uranus, it's really surprising events in our love life and our financials. So that will be in May. Stay tuned for that one later on. And Mars enters Pisces as well on March 22nd. Venus and Mars traveling so close together. I've got my Mars tuning fork too. <laughs> this is Mars. And Mars and Venus have been traveling pretty close together for a while now. And Mars is disempowered in Pisces, whereas Venus was exalted in Pisces. Venus is empowered in Pisces, where Venus feels right at home and in her power. Now we have Mars disempowered. Mars prefers fire, not water. And so this might be good for us, though. This could dampen the war that is going on, all the wars, Russia, Ukraine, and Israel, and Gaza. This could dampen that war, and Venus rules over peace. So Venus is empowered, saying peace and love. And Mars is more of that aggressive warrior who's now disempowered, and the divine feminine is rising. And right now the divine masculine, it's just that yin and yang energy, you know? And so right now we've got the Venus is more empowered, whereas Mars and Pisces becomes disempowered. And Mars will conjunct Saturn on April 10th. This is a big day. Put a mark on your calendar. Mars conjunct Saturn, April 10th, right when we have that total solar eclipse in Aries aspect of fire and ice. Mars is fire, Saturn is ice, which this brings determination and fierce ambition, but it's also very volatile, very conflict oriented. Not nearly as negative as Venus conjunct Saturn affecting our love and money, but I will say there could be some conflicts, big major conflicts in our world when Mars conjunct Saturn on April 10th. So I will talk about that in the next total solar eclipse in Aries. 
so much going on there. It's going to be like a six hour reading, I think. And just before this lunar eclipse, Venus will sextile Jupiter, the great expander. This is a really good one. This is good news. This is saying, hold your loved ones close and appreciate your loved ones and embrace the changes that are inevitably coming. Whenever we have an eclipse, there's a lot of change happening. But sextiles, this gives a nice blessing of harmony. It's a happy-go-lucky transit that assures us that everything is going to be okay, no matter what happens, even if it feels like it's not going to be okay. Venus, sextile Jupiter, such positive energy saying, all is well. No matter what is going on in your life, all is well. That is your mantra. Just keep saying it. All is well. Even if it feels like you're lying to yourself, just know that everything is unfolding for your divine purpose now. And sometimes not getting what you want is the best thing for you. And sometimes losing something is just making way for something even better to show up. So whatever's going on for you, just know that this Venus, sextile Jupiter, is telling you it's all going to be okay. It's all going to work out in the end. You will see that there was a reason for everything. And everything is unfolding as it should. All is well. And this would be a wonderful time for travel, adventure. This is coming right in at spring break for those of us in Oregon. And just getting out with your family and really spending time and enjoying the loved ones and just go enjoy your life because, you know, tomorrow is not promised to anyone and that's sort of the feeling of this eclipse portal. We don't know what's going to happen. So just enjoy this moment because this present moment is all we have right now. And we have a lot of endings and beginnings with this lunar eclipse and major life transformations. I know so many people going through major life changes. Do you? So many endings of relationships, but also beginnings of relationships. It's crazy times. So just enjoy the day and don't worry about tomorrow. And Mercury in Aries will be going retrograde on April Fool's Day. That's so funny for Mercury. I'm not even kidding. And let's just worry about that next month. I'm not going to do a deep dive because I'm just going to focus on today. That's not happening yet. And we've got a lot on our plate already this month. And you know what's worse than Mercury retrograde right now is the solar storms. <laughs> Tell me if you're getting sick of me talking about solar storms and maybe I'll stop because I was going to record this astrology reading over the weekend and I just got hit with this wicked combination of insomnia and exhaustion and ringing sounds in my ears that must have been the sound of the music of the spheres or something. It was like music, but it was really mystical, magical, otherworldly. Like I couldn't even tell what was going on. I've never had anything quite like this. And I we did a whole separate recording about solar storm symptoms. So I'm really aware of it, but this was wild. And I will link down below to the solar storm video if you're interested in learning more. But I had to embrace this deep rest over the weekend. There was just no fighting it. When your body is just takes you down in an arm wrestle and says, you need to rest now. Whenever I'm feeling off now, I just look, I just Google, is there a solar storm happening? And sure enough, every time there is and this was solar flares that started happening on march 8th and they are expected to continue running through march 13th so they're still happening as i'm recording this on march 11th and these solar flares are much worse than usual because they are directed at earth more than any of the other storms we've ever had in the past. I invite you to Google it. You can find all kinds of information. But on March 9th, that was the day I was really feeling exhausted. 
we had the biggest widespread solar storms and they were directed and hitting at spacecraft, Earth and Mars. There was Mars again. It was the solar flares hitting Mars. Poor Mars is so disempowered right now. And now he's got solar flares at him. And these solar storms were happening in quick succession, affecting radio transmissions and a lot of satellites were affected. And these solar storms are just getting more and more intense as we get closer to that 2025, which is the year of the major solar flip. And so we did this separate video, so I'll just tell you, you can find it down in the description. And do you think I should start doing separate solar storm reports so that I'm not obsessing about the solar storms in your astrology readings. I would love to know if you just want me to separate them out, but I can't stop talking about them because we're really having so many geomagnetic storms. I follow an Aurora Borealis um, YouTube group to our Facebook group and the Aurora Borealis group said that Alaska had these incredible just incredible aurora borealis so maybe i just have to quit my job and just go film aurora borealis i don't know <laughs> but i am a little obsessed by solar storms and if you don't like it i'll just segment this and you can just skip right ahead but maybe i will do separate readings on the solar storms because they are so out of control right now but back to libra let's talk about libra for a moment the planet of balance we can only pray for balance in our world right now because things are have been so off balance. And this Libra full moon, she's all about beauty, relationships, and caregiving, especially with that Venus, exalted Venus rules over Libra. So this is a beautiful lunar eclipse for divine healing and feminine energy is rising on our planet. It has some real positives here. And I know eclipses always seem scary and change is scary, but it's just lovely that we have Venus exalted in Pisces during this Libra lunar eclipse. It's just magical and it's really showing that there is going to be a lot of love to be found on this eclipse portal. And Libra also rules over justice, the scales of justice. And there could be significant news related to lawsuits. Maybe you're in a legal battle, a lot coming to the surface and love will win. That is the message here. Love wins in the lawsuits, this eclipse. And Libra being the sign of relationships. We may be a little off balance in our relationships. Our love life might get a little topsy-turvy. Eclipse is causing a lot of change. Hang in there if you can, if you want to save your relationship. This eclipse portal could be a real test of the strength of your relationship. And my favorite relationship advice came from a client who was married 58 years. And she told me when I asked, what is the secret to a long lasting love? Because these two were so in love with each other. And she took a deep breath. And she said, tolerance, it's tolerance, <laughs> it's tolerance. So if you don't have tolerance for your partner, you might as well just jump ship now because that's what a good, long lasting relationship takes. I've been together with my husband for 18 years now. And yeah, there is some tolerance, but I'm so happy and in love. So this eclipse in Libra, an air sign with Aries, the fire, we really have this explosive combustible energy when you put air and fire together the the air when you blow on a fire it only gets bigger right we just had a big fire where i live in oregon and it was the wind caused the flat fire to get out of control wind and fire is a really bad combination right so that's the kind of energy we are going to be having it's very combustible <laughs> tolerance just you know try not to fuel the fire with air 
And now I just want to read the Sabian symbol for this Libra lunar eclipse. And I want to read both Libra at five degrees and Aries at five degrees because it's, you know, sun and moon eclipse. So Libra five degrees is a man revealing to his students the foundation of an inner knowledge upon which a new world could be built. And the keynote is the necessity for the youthful spirits to learn from a teacher who through long experience has been able to reach solid and illuminating truths, seed ideas. And we're in spring and lots of seed ideas, right? And when the pupil is ready, the master appears, but he may appear in disguises. He may even be your enemy. <laughs> What matters is not the master, but the mastery he reveals to you. And it is veiled in his purpose. It has to be contacted through this person rather than within this person. So devotion to a guru may be the way, but sooner or later, it should be transmuted into reverence. The truth within the disciples saluting in true humility, the truth in the teacher, just like you say namaste, seeing my, the light in me sees the light in you. And what is evoked by this symbol of the is the essential, rather mysterious process of transmission of information and teachings, what is transmitted if the situation is really understood by all participants is not merely knowledge, it is actually beingness. And I think of something we use in Reiki, we talk about resonance. When you take a Reiki class, it's not just about the teachings of Reiki, but it's about getting in resonance with the teacher getting into that same higher vibrational energy level. And so that's kind of tied into this too. I just love that. And now I'm going to read Aries at five degrees, a triangle with wings. These are so mystical. <laughs> Must be that Neptune and Pisces. And the keynote is a capacity for self transcending. And this is the symbol of the desire to reach a higher level of existence, of pure aspiration or devotion, of bhakti. And what has emerged in this first phase of the process of differentiation is becoming aware of the possibility of further upreachings. And the principle of levitation is seen as one of two essential factors in evolution. And the emergent being glorifies and defies it, but is still only seen as an idea. At this stage, the whole being experiences a childlike longing for its eventual realization. And a new dimension of being is envisioned mobilizing a creative endeavor. Well, that's a wild one too. These, I really have to unpack these for the meaning. <laughs> Did you ever do light as a feather, stiff as a board when you were a kid? We used to do that all the time in the playground. And it was this little game where you put two fingers under, under your friend and you say light as a feather, stiff as a board, and you try to have them levitate up. And oh man, we wanted to levitate, but it never really happened. But it was fun trying. <laughs> so there's this childlike childlike imagination that is creating a new dimension. There's just so much as we go into this portal into the Aries season, which begins on the equinox. We're really calling in this new way forward now. Can you feel it? So much is about to change, but it's so unknown. It's such a new, new dimension, just like the Sabian symbol says, and it's going to take our childlike imagination just to figure it out. <laughs> and now I'm going to read the lunar eclipse in Libra for each and every sign. Aries, this
this lunar eclipse is opposite your sign. And this has you feeling under pressure <laughs> to get it all done. You have so many goals <clears throat> and things that you want to accomplish with these big lofty goals for 2024, but then your relationships and your family may be tugging at you for your attention at the same time. It can just feel like there's not enough of you to go around right now. And add to that, you have Chiron, the wounded warrior, healer, triggering your deepest wounds and pulling up things from the past that need to be processed, that need to be healed. And next up will be that total solar eclipse in your own sign, in your first house affecting you, who you are, and in your I am potential. So you will want to lighten up your schedule over the next few weeks to months just so you can process and feel all the feels that may come up during this intense eclipse portal that is truly affecting you. Oh, you might need time just to stare at a blank wall to decompress. So ask for the support you need right now at work and at home and with loved ones. You may need a little more support. Taurus, this lunar eclipse is quincunx, your sign, giving you that topsy-turvy, kind of wobbly feeling at work, in your family, and in your relationships. It can seem like something is a little bit off kilter right now, and you're not sure where you stand, like making you feel more insecure about taking the next steps forward on your plans. And something is just about to change for you, Taurus. And it's because of somebody else's choice. It's out of your control. And the best thing you can do right now is to just surrender to the process. <laughs> Be adaptable and ready to make compromises. Focusing on your routine, doing some self-care, exercise, eating nourishing foods, and taking care of the cows, as they say, you may find that your friends are your greatest source of support this month. Gemini, this Libra eclipse is trying your sign, giving you creative opportunities and you're so fertile, this whole eclipse portal. If you're wanting to get pregnant or even just give birth to a new idea or a new project, or write a book or do something creative, this is a time when the energy really supports you, Gemini, to do the thing, to do something brand new, to get out of your comfort zone now <clears throat> because you're feeling more confident and comfortable in your own skin. So put yourself out there in the world. And if you're single, you may just find true love this month. And if you're in a relationship, it may deepen and your commitment can grow even stronger. Cancer, this Libra eclipse is square your sign bringing you tensions at work and at home. And you just might want to escape it all and go on an adventure this spring. And you might need a getaway just to get some perspective that the problems you're facing, they're really not so big. You're kind of like a garden hose right now with too many holes poked in the hose. The water is spraying everywhere. Your energy is scattered. You have too many projects. You're doing too many things. And it's just time to bring all your energy and all of your power back home to get back in tune with your own natural healing and self-care routines. Do something good for yourself. When is the last time you've had a massage or gone to the hot springs or just had fun, Cancer? Go do that. 
Leo, you have a lucky sextile with this eclipse, putting you in a more outgoing mood. This is a time to reconnect with old friends or old flames for fun and romance. There may be some big shift in your consciousness that allows you to call in a financial windfall this month. Or maybe you just want to get a loan or a mortgage on a house or a grant or some unexpected money that may show up during this eclipse portal. And you don't always have to work so hard for everything. Sometimes you can just allow the good things to show up to you effortlessly because you are worthy, Leo, and you deserve it. Virgo, Libra is your next door neighbor on the chart. So you will be feeling all the feels this eclipse, big changes in your relationships, friendships, and your family life. There could be breakups or falling in love. You may act on sudden urges with a desire for deep connection with a new love and everyone will become a mirror for you this month, Virgo. And you can really see who you are during this eclipse portal by just seeing what is showing up for you in your life right now. You may have to make some small adjustments in the ways you're doing things to get success are to go forward. The ways you used to be doing things aren't working anymore, so you have to come up with a new way forward. And you have a strong urge to achieve some big goal that you've been keeping a secret, and now is the time that you can make real progress on it, and it may bring you financial rewards because your second house is lit. Oh dear Libra, hold on sweet pea, because this Libra lunar eclipse is hitting home for you, hitting your first house of who you are and all of your relationships and your family and your loved ones and just having some huge shifts going forward in your relationships and your work partnerships this year. Feel the feelings of wanting to make a big change, like quitting your job or breaking up or getting a divorce, but maybe hold off on actually doing the thing without giving it plenty of time and space and consideration because you're under this influence of a crazy making eclipse portal right now, Libra, and it's hitting you the most. So it's better to just get out your journal and write it all out, write out your feelings, plot your course for change of directions instead of jumping off the ship. <laughs> Embrace personal changes in your beauty routine, maybe get your hair cut, buy some pretty new clothes that make you feel uplifted and take on some kind of passion project to fix up your house. Just reorganize your room, maybe getting a new comforter for your bed that's uplifting, bringing your energy into your home surroundings, or maybe you want to do something really creative, take a painting class or explore some new form of creative pursuits or artwork. Get creative and try not to make the change, just think about the changes for now. Scorpio, just like Virgo, you are closer to the action of the eclipse in this semi-sextile to your sign, which will bring harmony in your relationships and a desire to beautify your home. Just like Libra, you may want to remodel, redecorate, or plant some flowers, do some, do some gardening. This moon will light up your intuition, spirituality, and you may be open to receiving divine messages in meditations and dreams with that Venus and Pisces trying your sign and the Sun-Neptune conjunction. Pay attention to what it is spirit is trying to tell you. A higher force is guiding you 
on a new path and a new adventure this spring if you're open to the intuitive insights. Sagittarius, you have this peaceful sextile this eclipse. You've just completed a major growth cycle and your relationship and your work life are more harmonious because of the changes you've made in your own personal outlook or mindset. And you may be seeking new friendships, new work projects, or new social circles to find people who align with your higher vibrational energy and your pursuits. There's something you've been wishing for for a while now, Sagittarius, and this eclipse portal has the best chance to bring it to you in this quantum leap transformation that has you living your best life going forward this year. Capricorn, you're so responsible and you've been in a powerful leadership position, but this eclipse has you wanting to take a break from all that heavy lifting work that you've been doing and go see some tulips blooming or just go on an exotic island somewhere. Go to the beach. This eclipse is really a thrill-seeking ride for Capricorns. And just sneak away and do something really fun that this spring break if you can. It's time for you to work at bringing in more joy, Capricorn. Bringing in joy into your daily life, whether it's just sneaking some chocolate or taking a great escape when you can. Find little things to do right now that are new and exciting and uplift your heart into a state of joy. That joy is always available to you. Aquarius, this eclipse portal, you will be recalibrating with Pluto, the great transformer in your sign. And you're adjusting to a new kind of energy that wants you to do something outside of your comfort zone, outside of the box, which you are good at. So take that big leap of faith. Or maybe you have to travel for work or something will be forced upon you that is asking you to step into your personal power and be bigger in some way. You will be getting lots of attention this spring season. Make sure it's for something truly positive. Pisces, it seems like you're losing something to gain something even better in this eclipse portal. So don't be afraid if something goes away, just know that it is making room to fulfill your heart's desire with what you truly want. You have Saturn, the Lord of Karma, and the great soul teacher in your sign, bringing you those big soul lessons right now. And I like to focus on Saturn as the bringer of wealth too. You may step into a greater position of wealth in some way. Maybe you receive an inheritance. Maybe you get a promotion at work. Try listening to our wealth act activation sound healing so that you can just see what shows up for you that wants to bring you into this higher state of wealth during this eclipse portal. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.